opportunity. Um, good to see Commissioner Karwaski as well. I serve with him on the East Metro Strong Board and he was endorsed by the St. Paul Area Chambers Political Action Committee in this past election. So it's great to have partners um, in elected officials who are responsive to the business community. Um, so yeah, I, I had gone back and forth in my head, like do I want to do a PowerPoint on the governor's budget, but ultimately decided against it because I'm like, I don't want it to be like, these are my ideas and I'm, I'm putting them out there and, and like endorsing all of them. So I just decided to, to, to go um, through it. And I would never call myself a keynote speaker. So um, this can be more of a dialogue. So if you have any questions about anything I say throughout this, feel free to raise your hand and we'll just have a conversation just because I'm not that interesting. <laughs> so going into the legislative session, I'm sure everyone's aware of the $17.6 billion budget surplus. Um, most of that is one-time money, meaning that you know it's either this biennium and some of it into the next biennium. And a lot of it was based on some of the federal funds that came our way um, from COVID relief. So also in the session, um, I don't think a lot of people were expecting uh, the election results to go the way they did. I would say even the House and the Senate were not necessarily expecting a DFL trifecta but with the governor and both bodies of the legislature. And I'll say this session is unique, um, one in that regard, but also just the pace at which they're working. I've been around the Capitol in various capacities for about 15 years and I've never seen them off and running like, like they're doing this year and the speed at which they're advancing bills through committee. Um, usually the first month or so is, you know, overviews from the agencies and with the massive amount of new legislators like the commissioner talked about, you know, they're, they're really <laughs> getting their, their feet wet very early. Um, you probably saw last week the, the governor um, put out in totality his budget recommendations. He had done it in pieces leading up, but kind of the whole package um, was, was revealed last week. And while kind of like after the election and um, up, uh, up until session, a lot of his conversation was about focusing on one-time expenditures and infrastructure investments. I think, you know, you can safely say the budget is, is more expansive than that and some of the proposals um, that were in there. And, and frankly, a lot of long-term obligations um, included there. So the current two-year budget is $52 billion. And what has been proposed by the governor would make the next two year budget $65 billion. So, you know, $13 billion increase, about 26%. And um, a lot, I can kind of go through the, the, the highlights of some of that um, because a lot of them are ongoing expenses going forward. So like, and a lot of them are, are really good things like uh, education funding, um, formula increases. Um, obviously schools and education are important to the business community and, and having a well-trained workforce. So yeah, there's, there's um, it, a 4% and 2% increase um, proposed there. Increases to the child care tax credit and child tax credit which obviously everyone knows availability and affordability of uh, childcare is a big issue too when it comes to your workers. Um, I think the walls checks came back um, in a little bit of a, a different format, kind of reducing the income limits, but still about 200 and, or 2.5 million households would be eligible for that. On that note, I wouldn't say that the legislature seems too excited about the walls checks, so at the end of the day, I, I don't know if that will happen. Um, and then kind of the big one is this paid family and medical leave program. And while I don't think anyone would, would argue with the fact that, you know, 
employees should definitely have benefits and the availability to take care of their families or recover from sickness and, and injury um, and maternity leave and what have you. Um, this program that's being advanced in the state is definitely um, more expansive than we've seen in any other state, like even democratically run states that have adopted this across the country it's over double the amount of paid leave allowed with the with the 24 weeks here um, and frankly a lot of employers recognize that the benefits packages that you offer are, are key to retaining and attracting employees in this challenging work you know environment when the when there's so many shortages in terms of, of filling positions so most employers are trying very hard to come up with attractive benefits and leave packages for that purpose. But under the law that's being proposed, you know, unless what your business has lines up exactly with what the state has, you cannot opt out. And so, I mean, that's a problem in that it's like a mandate instead of a, you know, incentive to go along with that but it would be funded by a payroll tax increase split between uh, the um, employee and the employer. Currently, the proposal's at 0.7%, but just a month ago, it was 0.6, so <laughs> we'll, we'll see by the time that it uh, gets um, past the finish line, but that adds up to $1.2 billion a year. And I think, Perhaps the most concerning part of this proposal is that it's then run and administered by the state, which the governor is recommending 300 new employees. So that's like 300 employees moving forward that are added to the state budget and the obligation to pay for that. So uh, this is a big deal and it's getting a lot of attention from chambers. I know you guys have done outreach on it. We've been sending letters as well, but I think you know, the message to lawmakers here is, you know, if we're going to do this, we ought to do it right and do it responsibly. And fast tracking this at the pace that it's going is, is concerning. So um, a lot of legislators are saying, you know, we're not hearing from our businesses. And even though they're hearing a lot from chambers, so I would encourage individual businesses, if you have concerns, to continue to reach out to your legislators there. So, sorry, I kind of went on a, a long rant about <laughs> that one, but it, it's a big deal. Um, kind of together with that, the, the governor's budget includes the earned sick and safe time, which, um, and funding to, to regulate that. There's a proposal um, to uh, legalize adult use cannabis um, and then set up a taxation system for that and then set up a state agency to run that. So again, the agency, you know, uh, grows government and then obligations moving forward. Um, important probably to a lot of the folks um, in this room from the local government sector is um, uh, local government aid and county program aid. Uh, the governor's budget would um, provide 30 million um, to each. I think especially, you know, um, being so closely affiliated with the city of St. Paul, we will we'll be on board for, for getting more into that. I mean, I think that that pot of money needs more, that funds your police, your fire, your infrastructure, and it's a really important um, source of funding. And so I think that's an area that um, could use some more attention. Um, and then also public safety uh, was another um, investment in the budget, 300 million for local government. Uh, grants to I improve public safety. Um, again, I think um, some local government groups are asking for a little bit more there as well. Uh, one area of the budget that is um, a big priority of the St. Paul Area Chambers and, and one that we're, we're happy about is, um, is housing. We all know in the East Metro we have a shortage in availability of affordable housing. I believe the figure that John just showed me was 18,000 units in the, in the East Metro. And you know, that's across the whole continuum from housing. Obviously we have unsheltered populations that need 
urgent attention and care and somewhere to go, but we also need affordable units. We need units that people who are advancing in their careers can, can move up to. So we support investments at all levels. And I think this is one area where um, a lot of these one-time dollars that are in the budget have been directed towards housing, you know, the downplay, down payment assistance program, emergency shelter and homeless programs, um, uh, housing infrastructure bonds, um, naturally occurring affordable housing. Like, these are the kind of investments that, that make sense to use these one-time dollars to achieve some, some really good things. So really pleased to see that. Um, I would say some people, um, myself included, were a little um, surprised to see um, the amount of new taxes that were included in, in the governor's budget, especially with, given the current short-term surplus, um, uh, along with the, the payroll taxes I talked about earlier um, for the paid family medical leave and the cannabis tax, um, he's proposing a new capital gains tax. Um, Minnesota currently doesn't have any capital gains tax. Um, increasing license tab fees. Um, um, a, a eighth of a cent um, sales tax in the, um, in the metropolitan area to fund metro transit. And in conversations that I've had with some East Metro elected officials, there's concern that this is an effort to try to bail out the Southwest uh, light rail by collecting money with the, with the whole um, metro area. So I know there's some concerns there. Um, and then also some increases for um, DNR fees, like state parks and fishing licenses, which also find kind of um, surprising. But you know, at the same time, then there, there's a few other tax cuts um, in there, like we talked about the, the walls checks, and we talked about the child and child care tax credits. But he's proposing a reduction of the secur social security income tax. I think a lot of people are pushing for the full elimination there. And I think the Minnesota Senate especially is more committed towards that. So I think that will be an interesting conversation this session. And then kind of an important business one is the, the angel tax credit. Um, can, he, he put a pretty good investment of that in there just as a way to support startups. But kind of like the broader takeaways from the budget, you know, I, I, I think it was a little surprising, just lots of new ongoing obligations as most economic indicators are predicting that we're entering an economic downturn. So if we're you know, building all of these new programs and expenses into the budget, how do we keep up with that if you know, our revenues aren't keeping up and um, just concern going forward? Um, I will say, you know, in a few conversations that I've had with legislators, I wouldn't say like the legislature feels like, okay, this is, this is it. This is the budget we're gonna pass. Um, I don't think they're wed to it, you know. It's different now that there's a trifecta that neither body of the legislature kind of has to like stand up for the governor because they're all of the same party and they're kind of generally going to um, uh, think in the, in the same direction. So I think they'll have a lot of their own ideas and they'll do some things differently. Maybe some things better, maybe some things worse. Um, but this is just kind of the starting line for the budget conversation. Um, so I do expect lots of new ideas to come up as this goes and I, um, yeah, buckle up, they're moving fast. So <laughs> I'll kind of stop there and breathe and if anyone has questions, I am happy to attempt to answer them. Uh, there was, uh, yep. Yeah. Um, so when does it have to be determined that budget? When does it have to be approved? Is there a deadline? Well, so the, the legislature ends um, the end of May, but, um, in theory, they don't need to be done until July 1st when the fiscal year ends. So 
if they go into special session with the trifecta, we know we're doomed, though. So they'll, 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 they'll finish at the end of May, but yeah. Bill? Yes, um, and Eric, you might know this too. We're supposed to get in touch with our legislators. Is that who we gonna, if we don't agree with what they're doing? But with the, with the paid family. And would that be what, Leanne Lilly or? Well, yeah, if it's okay. Senator Tujan and... Yeah, that's Lily. Lily and Tujan. And Tujan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oakdale is all unified in one district. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I didn't realize it was that Leon had all of... Leon's a good friend, so I'll, I'll tell him I was here. And I'll tell him to expect lots of calls. <laughs> Yeah, John and I will be there. <laughs> what time is that? Three o'clock at Central Park, right by the YMCA. I'll, I'll be there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Impact letters. So if your business is being impacted, that's what you need to do is define exactly how that can be impacted by the change and then get that to your legislator. Don't just call and complain. You actually define how it's going to affect your bottom line and how it's going to affect your yeah, and to that effect, um, at the at the Minnesota Chamber's uh, website, they actually have a calculator that you can figure out exactly how much it's going to cost you. So, but that, that has to get to the committees. Right? Yes. That's not just to the legislature. You know, who works for us it needs to get to the committees so they can see how many people are impacted. Yep. Yep. Though I mean. The, the, I guess, good thing about a bill of this magnitude is that it has a lot of committee stops. So there's a few more still to go. Um, usually um, they'll try to limit the conversation to what the um, jurisdiction of that committee is, but I think, yes, continuing to express whatever concerns you have in whatever forum that you're able is a good idea. Yeah. Frank Hugo first. <clears throat> okay, there's some talk about eliminating the tax on Social Security. Mm -hmm. Where is that at? I haven't heard a lot about it. I know there a couple of people said, you know, they, they work on it, but I haven't heard anything more about it. So where do you think we're at? Yeah, the, the governor's budget had a reduction, like there was a cap in the income, but I think the Minnesota Senate um, is particularly interested in full elimination. Uh, I think that'll be one of the, the tax bill is usually one of the last ones done in a legislature, so I think that'll be part of the final negotiations. And so, I mean, definitely keep watch of the, the committee, and that's another one that I would especially um, encourage you, if it's something you care about, to talk to your legislators about. Because Minnesota is an island in, the, in that regard, um, definitely. Yes, Dan. Are you, uh, do you have the crystal ball and anticipate where the legislature could approve a few things early in the session just to get a few things done that are, uh, that are uh, popular? <coughs> wait towards the end when everything's being negotiated. Any thoughts? I think they could definitely do that, especially when it comes to one-time money. Like, um, 
for example, and, and we're supportive of this, there's a, there's a package that would provide like emergency homeless shelter relief. And you know, um, St. Paul, we've got pretty significant unsheltered populations that, um, you know, so getting those dollars out the door when it's winter and these places need it, you know, you can make a one-time um, expenditure there. Or, you know, I think when it comes to the transportation funding, the IIJ, JA, they, they could definitely do that early. In terms of things that like go into the next budget, like I don't anticipate too much because they kind of have to come the whole, each committee gets their own target, like this is how many billion dollars you have to spend and it all is kind of the big package. But I do think and, and that both um, Speaker Hortman and Majority Leader Dietzik, um have wanted to move up the decisions on, on the targets to be earlier so that you know there can be more thoughtful and public input into the budget to the end that hopefully you know it won't be this mad rush to the end and a surprise bill. So fantastic. Thank you. Thank so much. you so much. <laughs>